Today we'll create this gradient letter design in Inkscape. To begin, let's grab the pen tool, then let's click somewhere in the canvas, hold down the control key to make a straight line, click down here, and right click to finish the path. Now let's open up the Fill and Stroke dialog by going to Object, Fill and Stroke. We don't need a fill color, so in the Fill tab, let's click the X here to turn it off. Now let's go to the Stroke Paint tab, and for now, let's give it a black stroke. Then we can go to the Stroke Style tab and increase the stroke width. Something like 10 millimeters should be good. And for the cap setting here, let's switch to round caps. Finally, we can use the opacity slider at the bottom to put it at about 50% opacity. This will make it easier to see everything. Next, let's turn on snapping up here. Then let's grab the ellipse and arc tool and hover over the bottom node of the path so that it says handle to cusp node. Now let's click and drag while holding down control to create a perfect circle. And let's make the circle slightly shorter than the path. Now we want to turn both of these strokes into paths. So let's grab the selector tool and select them both. Then go to path, stroke to path. All right, now let's deselect everything and let's right click the ring shaped path and duplicate it. For this one, we want to fill in the center. To do this, we can go to path, break apart. Then we can turn the two resulting paths into a single path by going to path, union. Now let's grab the bottom center scale handle, and while holding down control, let's drag up until the circle snaps to the inner part of the ring here. Let's now select everything. Then let's activate the shape builder tool. We want to click this segment down here, then click and drag across these segments. And now if we press enter, we should have these two separate paths. With one of the paths selected, let's open the Path Effects dialog by going to Path, Path Effects. And here, let's choose the Offset Path Effect. Then if we click inside the Offset setting and scroll down the mouse wheel, we can inset the path. Negative 0.4 looks pretty good. Let's now do the same for the other path. First, add the Offset Path Effect to it. And we want to use the same offset setting, so negative 0.4 for me. Now we can finalize the path effects by selecting both paths and going to Path, Object to Path. All right, now we can start adding some colors. Let's start by selecting this path here and raising the opacity all the way up. Then in the Fill tab of the Fill and Stroke dialog, let's give it a linear gradient with this button. For the first color, I'll go with a blue. For the second color, let's raise the alpha channel all the way up, and I'll make this one a purple. Now we can grab the other path, raise the opacity all the way up, and let's give it the same gradient. To do this easily, we can first click the linear gradient button, and now we have a drop down here to choose the gradient that we just created. However, on this path, we want to reverse the gradient. So let's click the reverse button here. And now the first letter is finished. For a B, we can first duplicate the two A paths, flip them horizontally with this button up here, and move them to the right while holding control to keep everything horizontally aligned. Then we can grab the node tool, Select the top three nodes of this part of the path here, hold control and raise them up a bit. All right, for a C, we'll need to be a little more creative. First, let's duplicate the A paths again and move them over here. Next, we'll cut off the parts of the paths to the right of the center. To do this, we can grab the pin tool Snap to the Smooth node up here, hold Control to keep it straight and click down here, then bring it all the way around the right side and close it off. Let's give it a fill color and turn off the stroke. Now we can select all three paths, 
and go to Path Flatten. This removes all of the underlying parts, and now we can delete the extra path. Next, we want to extend the paths out more to the right. For this, we can grab the rectangle tool, snap to the cusp node at the top here, and drag out a rectangle to the right. Then using the selector tool, we can grab the bottom center scale handle and resize it until it snaps to the bottom cusp node of the path. Next, we'll round off the two corners on the right. For this, we can first turn the rectangle into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. Then we can grab the Node tool and click the Add Corners LPE button here. We now get these little circular handles near the nodes. If we select the two nodes on the right, we can round the corners by grabbing one of the circular handles and dragging it until the little arrows meet up at the center. Now let's duplicate this path. Let's move it down until it snaps to the bottom path. We can now select everything and activate the Shape Builder tool. Then let's click and drag across these two segments and these two and press Enter. To finish it up, we can add a black rectangle for the background. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching.